Well, come here and I've set up everything. I've got it all ready to do what is my first live reading of three personal beliefs of my own. And I'm going to share these with you and give some explanations under them. And uh, why not just dive right into it? Here's belief and ideal number one. It's a numerology, divine numerology, an analysis of the square root of 11. The square root of 11 is 3.316624794. Those are 11 numbers. Those 11 numbers, when multiplied by themselves, equal 11. The 3 to the left of the decimal point represents the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. The period or decimal point, I should say, it represents Jesus because he is the transition. He is the way to transform. To, to go to a new world, you must go through Jesus. He said, but by me. So therefore, he is in between the wholeness and the incompleteness. He is the Alpha and Omega. Now let's look at the numbers a little more closely. 0 0.316624794. That's the smallest or micro of God. It's the value. It's not irrational or containing a five, so it doesn't designate self. It also doesn't have an eight, so it's not numerating or symbology of the devil. And uh, see what else we got here. It has six, six, two of them, not three of them. So therefore not the mark of the beast. And then two, four, seven for... 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week. 9. 9 is considered opposite the 6, or angelic. So, the opposite of the beast is angelic, therefore 9. 0. I think it comes right at the end of this number, because it represents that one might have to experience death, or 0, in order to go to perfection, or paradise, or heaven, or whatever. And so uh, the zero is right before the end, and this alludes that everything must die to go to a higher place. And then a four. Why is four significant? Well, if there's four seasons, you can split a circle equally into four parts, and that's also the sign of completion for some religions. And let's break it down a little differently now. Let's say 11 can also equal five times the set of two plus one fifth and that would equal 55 fifths or 11. now what would 55 fifths represent for me for that means for me that means two selves a man and a woman sharing a life together the 55 and the five underneath because like i said they're sharing a life together and when you divide 55 by the number, you get 11. Therefore, another 11 heaven. In binary, 1011 equals 11. And I often say that most associate and think of heaven when they hear the word 11. So, in binary, 1011 is 11. Now, to opposite that number, to, to say 1101, is very interesting because the opposite of 11 is 13. And why is 13 significant? Well, so many believe it to be a lucky or unlucky number. And 13 is based on the belief that there was 12 disciples in Christ at the Last Supper. And that was a very dark, dark evening. I mean, just the ominous of it all was horrifying, I imagine. So, uh... That's some anomalies I see and I share with you about the idea of the square root of 11 and what the numerology of each number could be and how they are interconnected. And I'll share with you some of my favorite numbers. 11, 3, 777, 7, 9, 78, 21, 23, 20, 69, 96, 98, and 2000. 11 for heaven again. 3 for the Trinity. 777 jackpot. 
seven nine seventy eight my birthday twenty one for wins man has exactly twenty one extensions from his body fingers thumbs toes and his reproductive organ twenty three for one of the missions that I am here on this earth to do also twenty three for Michael Jordan of which I looked up to as a youth thirteen I try to keep myself not too hung up on bad luck or anything but 13 still it has a presence from time to time and I don't let it become too triggering I try to create more positive omens than bad superstitions uh, 20 for a past associates faith of which he shared and brought to me and it seemed to resonate of memories of the past it, he called it the Ark of the Covenant which was 20 circles within a circle that formed the circle and 69, just not as sexuality, but I'm also a cancer sign, so that's my sign. Uh, 96 for the year I graduated high school. And 98, for in 1998, two movies came out that I had a direct hand in making happen. I myself prefer the volume levels on evens with music, but I'm not too OCD about it. Most of the time I will, though put even numbers in the microwave. I often meditate for a second to come up with a precise abstracted time for things I do put it in the microwave. If instructions say two minutes, 30 seconds, I, I get quiet and I ask myself and the little voice says two minutes and 38 seconds and then I put it in. So that's my first of my beliefs that I'll talk about and that was numerology by studying the square root of 11. And the second part, <clears throat> we'll call this, People Will Behold the Truth. And what I'm going to do first is read a little poem, then explain what that means to me and what it should mean to you or could. People will behold the truth. Oftentimes we have questions needing answer from outside source. I will tell you of truth's destination and help you set the course. First, you must be clear of what it is you are asking to so know. I will give you the seeds I have, but they will require your faith to grow. Go out into public where there will be people that are about. The truth you will find will be unwavering and without doubt. Quiet in your mind, ask, ask yourself the question you seek to know from. Then again, quiet in your mind, think of possible answers that might come. When you think of the correct answer, you will look upon another as they look upon you. People will behold the truth. Your eyes will connect as synchronicity will show you what's true. So basically what this is saying, if there's ever a question that you just can't come up with an answer and you're asking yourself over and you're asking the world over, just Use your mind, your brain as a tool. Ask yourself this question, then go out in the public where other people are, and they don't have any idea about what you're doing or why you're there unless they're divine themselves. And when you look into the public, think of the question, and then tell yourself the possible answers that you may have. And when you say that right answer, you'll know, because you're going to look at somebody and they're going to look at you, and you guys, your eyes will connect. And that's going to tell you whatever answer is in that head at that time is correct. It's the truth. And why is this again? Because people will behold the truth. In the last little bit, we're going to call the explanation of my most unique and radical Christian belief. And I say this, I've thought this for quite some time. I've shared it for just about as long and this is a personal belief of mine based on the teachings of Christianity okay to better understand tomatoes let's talk of nectar it is of my understanding and foremost beliefs that a lot of the stories depicted in religious texts are ultimately just stories we might have heard one before on earth as it is in heaven this this saying it rings true, and I'm about to show you how it's interconnected to what I'm saying. For me, first off, mankind was God's greatest creation. 
He put it above everything and all else. He even put it above the cosmos and life and yes, even the angels. Mankind was made near complete by the gift of free will given to them. Consider this like the part of the preamble in the United States of America, just as in an American law. If we the people find a law unjust or of no quality to follow, it is our deed and duty to upheave it. Mankind can practically rewrite and in a way veto prior doctrinizations that we now carry. Now go back on to on earth as it is in heaven. On earth are top agents of the government that are, they are elite spies and they conduct espionage. They have a so-called desires or reputation which therein depicts themselves as bad, dark, or evil. They play and play, and as they portray of a dismay, secretly cast in clay, they obey. Message being, Satan, who was once held high above all the other angels, when he walked, music was playing. He, could, he was even considered the most beautiful angel at one time. He sacrificed all that, that to become this sworn spy. Christ gave up his flesh and life as a sacrifice. Satan gave up his good name of grace as a sacrifice. The stories and brainwashed beliefs of old have dociled man into a standstill that more often than not they blame it all on the devil or claim this world is hell. Both are great insults to what is. Devil as God's creation, I see, is like the warden of hell. He has a job to punish, tempt, and test mankind. The acts we do cannot be so lightly tossed off as the devil made me do it. Hell, people, I met the devil. I can tell you he is tall. I'd say of about seven feet, all red. I couldn't see his feet, so. But atop of each shoulder he had three bones and they twisted and spiraled up. And that, that was showing like where wings once were. He is without an endowment or a member. Yep, he's totally a eunuch. And when I saw him, it was all in a red rock and underground environment. I feel these two threes on his shoulder that twisted. They're like a charm of calling him a real 666. Three sets of, well, two, three sets of twos each one being threes, therefore 666. And that is to call upon him with the Trinity. And I wouldn't advise doing that until you have the fortitude of faith to do such a thing. For better understanding of some of his names, I wrote the following. This will work on allpoetry.com as Azekels. It's called Biblical Psyche. <clears throat> And this is based off of Sigmund Freud's structure and breakdown of the mind and the different psyches of the mind. Lucifer is the id psyche. His bravado was rebellious. He is the least intelligent of the three, thinking he can go off and do his own thing. The id. Devil is the ego psycho, psyche. He bleeds... <laughs> That was a little Freudian slip, we'll have to say. Devil is the ego psyche. Being in the middle, he is somewhat neutral. He doesn't deny God or God's power. He just demands proof. The ego. Satan. Satan is the superego. He said that he will go above and beyond God himself. In a way, transcend. So that is the id, Lucifer, devil, the ego, and Satan, the superego. Now this doesn't contradict what I previously said about Satan being a spy. I'm just saying that the devil, the Lucifer, Satan, they all have dominion and jobs and rights and justice existing, but mankind has perverted tales and stories and accounts for so long that they give the devil more than he ever did have. And too much and too often I hear, hell yeah. Where does anybody say heaven yeah anymore? Where is anybody just freeing their positive beliefs and thoughts and faiths? 
I'd like to know. So I'm glad you listened to this video. This is my first live reading. If you notice under under the video, there will be links to the, the works and things I shared today. And I hope you tune in for another at another time. Goodbye.